You've seen the best. Now you've got the worst. The movie list you've all been waiting for. Because the internet hates positivity. I am the Kaiju no Kami from the Tokyo Animation News Network, and this is my list of the worst movies of 2023. I have my cheat sheet here because I'm just going to run through the list, just so you know. I only saw 31 movies this year, surprisingly, so there may be movies in the top mix that are not necessarily terrible movies, but I needed to put something on my top list since it is a top 10 list. So you're going to have to just deal with the top three not necessarily being terrible, but not good enough to not be on the good list. And that starts off with number 10, Knock at the Cabin. I've heard good things about this movie. Okay, I watched it the other day and it wasn't terrible, but damn was the movie boring at times. It's about these this couple that and their adopted daughter, they're, live, they're in this cabin. These four people come up and they start terrorizing them, saying that they have to make a sacrifice or the world's gonna be destroyed. And that's it. That's the movie. It, it could have been an hour long. Instead, it's 100 minutes long. There are all these flashback scenes that felt really unnecessary, except for maybe one possibly two but overall it was just like huh okay cool mm. not a terrible movie by any means nowhere near Shyamalan's worse just kind of boring number nine it's a wonderful knife kind of like totally killer which played on back to the future with slashers this one plays on a it's a wonderful life with slashers a uh, girl's friend is killed, and, or a bunch of people are killed on Christmas Eve, and the girl wishes what her life would be like, if everyone's life would be like if she didn't exist. She Then she gets sent back in time, or not back in time, but she gets sent to a world where she didn't exist, where the killer continues to rampage this town. And it was an enjoyable movie, it wasn't bad or anything, it just... Wasn't as good as Totally Killer. I think maybe had I seen this before Totally Killer, I would have had a different opinion on it. Because it played along the same tropes. Uh, and some of the aspects, I was like, really? That's what would happen if she didn't exist? That doesn't make any sense. It was just kind of weird. And not in the good weird way, just the weird kind of way. But still worth checking out. Number eight is Infinity Pool. I have really liked the movies that Mia Goth has been in recently, and I heard a lot of great things about this one. Only thing is, it is just so damn boring. The plot just went all over the place. I couldn't even figure out what the hell was going on anymore at one point. There were these scenes that were just happening, and... It was like, wait, what? why are they doing that? Huh? What? Okay, so, not really the greatest, slightly boring, and also weird and not the good kind of way. Number seven, Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Now, to their credit, this is the best live action Transformers movie to date. Though that ain't exactly saying much. When I, I, I heard a long time ago they were doing a Beast Wars movie, so I thought it was going to be an actual Beast Wars movie. I don't know why they didn't get Gary Chalk to come back as Optimus Primal. Instead, they have Ron Perlman voicing him, which he did an okay job. The interesting thing is for being called Rise of the Beasts, the Beast Wars characters are barely even in the film. Like, they're in the opening sequence, and then that's about it until, like, the hour, hour and a half mark of the movie. And Primal is the only one who transforms and talks. Air Razor's in there, who's completely wasted, and she never turns into robot mode. And then Cheeto and Rhinox are in there, and they're 
They don't talk at all. And the villains are generic. Unicron is supposed to be the main villain, but there's nothing coming out of this. They have this villain called Scourge, who is pointless. Where, where are our Beast Wars characters? Where is Megatron and Waspinator and Pterosaur and Scorponok, Infernal, Black Arachnia, Tarantulas? Why were none of them in this film? It, it really dies down in the same tropes where we have human characters. Now, I know what you're thinking, but God's, you just praise Godzilla Minus One for having great human characters. Yes, this is true. A monster movie, you need to have human characters to guide the plot along. Godzilla and all those monsters are not actual characters. They're monsters. The Transformers are living, breathing people, beings who can talk, who are sentient. They're not just mindless beasts. They're characters. You don't need humans to be part of the Transformers movies because the Transformers can be their own characters. I don't understand why this is so hard for these movie makers to comprehend. Let me get a damn Transformer movie that is about the Transformers. That's why they can never do like a War for Cybertron movie because they have to have some freaking humans in there. But anyway, Rise of the Beast was the best Transformers movie to date for the live action ones, but not a very good movie. It follows the same tropes. We have another sky beam and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Number six. Another movie that was an interesting idea that should have been like 40 minutes long, and that was Skin of Rink. All you're doing is watching static on a TV with poorly sounding audio, which is intentional. It's not like with Sp Spider-Verse and... It's not like with Spider-Verse where the sound mixing should not be good, or should be good and isn't. No, this was done intentional. It's interesting how the grain plays with your mind, that it wants you to see things that aren't really there and makes you wonder if it was there or not. But I didn't need that for like 90 minutes. I could have got that effect done in 40. So that's another movie that just was an interesting premise. It just went on longer than it needed to. All right, the top five. I, uh, it's not the worst movie in the franchise, but holy shit, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny was crap. Poorly edited together, poorly shot. The actress who was the lead female character, I have no idea where she came from, but she was like a dime store evergreen. It's like, hey, we can't get evergreen. Oh, uh, well, she looks like evergreen. Let's cast her in this role. And the movie was crap. The first 20 minutes was the only positive of it. It's better than the Kingdom of Crystal Skull, though I'm not sure that's really saying much. But they just turned Indy into an unlikable, sad, pathetic, old fart. As Jeremy John said, what is up with them turning Harrison Ford characters into these old, miserable men? Is it because Harrison Ford is an old, miserable old guy himself? that they just need to do that to all his characters. Either way, it was trash. I hated what they did to Indiana Jones. And there were things in here that was like, okay, that scene was pointless. That scene was pointless. That character was pointless. So yeah, could have been worse, but should have been so much better. Number four, Fast 10. What the fuck? Like, seriously, what the fuck has happened to this series? This series, no, it has never been high-grade plots or anything. But the first several movies had amazing sound mixing and audio mixing. The sound mixing in this one sounded like it was coming out of a trash can at times. It was awful sound mixing. Whoever mixed this movie should be fired. Like, holy crap. 
And the rest of the movie was dog shit as it was, but the sound mixing. The sound mixing is where the, these movies should excel at, and that was awful. Bad all around. Plot is, makes no sense. The, the movie doesn't even have an ending. It just leaves off to be continued, kind of like what Across the Spider-Verse does, but even worse. It just, it doesn't even, I mean, you know these characters aren't dead because they're immortal. In fact, characters are just coming back from the dead left and right. You're like, oh, oh my god, it's a comic book universe where nobody ever actually dies. Even when there's a body, they're not dead. Ugh. All right, number three, if you can believe it, is Exorcist Believer. I'm not even a big Exorcist fan as it is. I like the first two thirds of the Exorcist, but the movie kind of loses me when it gets to the exorcism itself. I kind of feel like it turns into more of a comedy horror, but it still has a lot of great suspense and tension. Exorcist Believer had a lot of great ideas, having a demon possess two girls at the same time, and that the parents have to choose which one they want to save. And that was it. It was boring. It felt like a generic, just a generic exorcist movie. Not the exorcist, just an exorcist movie. Because there are millions of exorcism movies and this just felt like it was one of those. And then the ending was all crap. You're like, and they brought the mother back in from the original movie for some reason, I guess just to have her be in the trailer so they can make you think she's gonna have a purpose in the movie. It sucked. But it was still better than number two, which is Antem, Antem, Antmam, Bullshitia, Suckamania, Quantumania. When I first saw this movie, it was garbage. It sucks that Corellica accidentally ended up buying it from the Disney Movie Club because now the movie's made even worse. The saving grace of the movie at the time was Jonathan Majors. His role as Kang was the best thing about the movie. <coughs> now, it's even worse because, well, we all know what happened with the actor. So the movie was made even worse because of that, because he was the only thing that actually made it good. And all the plot development that they are building up for later movies is now pointless. Ant-Man 3 is a pointless movie. None of the cast had chemistry with each other. Even our main leads who've been in Ant-Man 1 and 2 had no chemistry with each other in this one. It felt like they were entirely different actors because they just didn't mesh well together. I have no idea what was going on with this one, but... <sighs> oh my god, and then MODOK. I am a huge... I love MODOK in the comics, especially his early appearances in Captain America when he's actually a credible threat. And, oh my god, even the worst, mm, even the worst CGI in other movies pales in comparison to the horrifying, whatever the heck they were doing with the CGI of MODOK. Oh my god, MODOK was awful. The, a big travesty. And then we have number one. To think there is a movie worse than Ant-Man 3. And that is Marlowe. Liam Neeson plays Philip Marlowe. It's supposed to be a neo-noir based on the Philip Marlowe character. You know, the character that has been portrayed in the 40s by Humphrey Bogart. And I want to say... Say Dick Powell? I want to say it's Dick Powell. And then we have Marlowe. 
I didn't think you could get worse than Ant-Man, but here we are. This movie is not only boring, it is so poorly edited together. None of the editing makes sense. Like, okay, it feels like you were watching video game cutscenes that were stitched together that don't actually show you how the character you're playing as got from point A to point B. It's just cutscene and then cutscene. There's one scene when Marlo jumps over the, he's trying to get into this club, this private club. They won't let him in. So it shows him jumping over bushes and these two gardeners show up and they start to fight. And then it cuts to showing Marlo driving up at the Hollywood sign, Hollywood land sign to talk to another cop buddy of his about some other thing is like wait but but wait what but he was just fighting some dudes in the garden when he jumped over at the club and now he's there was only one actor in the entire movie that actually felt like he was trying to take it his role legitimately and i don't even remember what that actor's name was but he was this assistant guy that ended up helping marlo in the second half he was great he was the only one who seemed to give a shit. Liam Neeson was clearly just phoning it in. This was his paycheck movie. Although I, there was apparently another movie he came out with this year that was also a paycheck movie. But Marlo was horribly edited. No good cinema. For being a noir, the cinematography sucked. Oh my god. God, it was a movie. I wanted to turn off like 20, 25 minutes in. It was that bad. But no, we watched the whole thing. We powered through it. Ugh. Yeah, Marlo, worst movie of 2023. Do not watch this movie unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself, Watch Marvel. As the big neo noir, film noir fan I am, this is hands down one of the worst, if not the worst, noir ever made thus far. So that's my list of 2023. There are some movies I have not seen yet that I would like to see that might end up made the list if I had, like The Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, Rebel Moon, which I did want to watch to put on this list, but my brain just would not let me commit to watching it. The Last Voyage of the Demeter I had not seen yet. But other than, but I think if I haven't seen it and it's supposed to be bad, I am not watching it. I am definitely not watching Flash. I am not watching Blue Beetle. I am not watching Aquaman. So yeah. What is your worst list of 2023? I would say let's hope 2024 is better for movies, but since this is the year that's going to be affected by the strikes, I'm not expecting too much in the way of movies. Hell, we'll see if I even get to see 10 movies in theaters. Deadpool 3 may be the only movie that comes out next year that I actually care to see. But whatever. Let me know in the comments. Click like, subscribe, the bell notification, whatever else you click. click blah, blah, YouTube has you click on to support me. You can support me on Patreon and Twitter at Toku AAN Network. And then my Discord, Facebook, Instagram is at Kaiju no Kami. And my website, creativitybydesignllc.com slash dot com. And then the store. Wow, my brain is like going all over the place right now. The store is creativitybydesignllc.com slash shop to buy cool Kaiju no Kami merchandise. There is also a link in the description below. So yes, what is your worst movie of 2023? What is your worst movie ever? Mine is Battlefield Earth. Until next time, bye.